Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're at a very exciting part of the build now. We are now fitting the cable deck chipboard floor. So what I'm doing, or what I've done for now is I've cleared the decks all the way through here so it's a nice clean run all the way through the floor. And then on the Celotex that I fitted, I don't know how long ago it was that I fitted it, but I just put it in there under pressure. And then what I went back to do, it was just to make room on site really, because there was so much stuff here, is that I've used some two by one roofing batten and gone in between the joists and come down the joist to where it needed to go. So in this case, this set of text is 100 mil thick. So I've gone down 105 millimeters just so I've got a nice clean run in between the joists so there's no Celotex hits it and potentially it might rub and then it might creak. It's just to do because I've put a little bit of pressure between fitting the Celotex in between the joists. So what I don't want is it going, <laughs> if there's ever such a little bit of compression there. So now that that's done and I've, I've gone all the way through from that point there, that's gonna be where I'm starting from. All the way down to the entry door, you can see there's a glue lamp beam just the left hand side of the right hand side of the opening. So all the way through there, where my nail gun is, it's all been battened. So if I just walk down, you can see I can actually walk on the Celotex. You shouldn't really walk on the Celotex, but you can see that I can walk on it, I can bounce up and down on it and all sorts. Now, what I could have done, just to help a little bit of the thermal value here, or the U value, is that I could have put, I could either use something called Gapo tape, or I could have used like an aluminium tape all the way across here. But customer doesn't want to do that, so quite happy just to do what we're doing here now, because potentially there might be an underfloor heated system through here. They keep changing their mind, but it might happen or it might not. So in any case, it's still gonna be warm in here. It's just not gonna be as you value as what you want. But anyway, so now I'm starting to fit the cable deck system. So what I've done is always start off with the groove end up against the wall. If I'll take you down there and show you. So you've got the tongue which is there, okay. And then you've got the groove, which fits on that side. Now, on the cable deck system, you've got a 10 mil perimeter going all the way around your floor. And then what you've got to do afterwards, you've got to seal all the edges with some D4 cable deck expanding wood glue, which I'll show you, which is just sat in the bucket here, just keeping it nice and warm it was minus temperatures this morning and now it's about plus five out there but it says with the cable deck it's got to be plus five and above for that glue to be able to work so even though it's plus five now that that glue pot was probably minus two this morning so what i've done so i've just put it in a nice warm bucket just to heat up the glue and then we can get cracking with it. So like I was saying guys, 10 mil perimeter. So obviously you put glue down, nice 10 mil bead across your joists, okay? And even on my perimeter noggins, that will all have some glue bond on there. And I'll put 10 mil packers up against the sole plate of my walls, all the way around the perimeter or where I'm putting the cable deck floor and just push them up until they touch. So it just needs to go touch down there. And now you're ready to fix the floor off. Now a good indicator for you, if you're an amateur and you want to um, be able to do this easily and you can't line up through for your screws, just pull the, the sheet material back a little bit and just mark each individual joist and mark them across if you're worried about them being out straight or not nicking your joists or connecting with your joists so yeah so now all i've got to do is what i like to do i've got them all stacked up outside only 10 sheets at a time i'm doing you can see 
got my workbench set up out there with some extraction on a saw. And you just cut it all out there, bring it in here, glue it, and you glue everywhere, guys. Okay, so you glue the tongue, you glue, you glue the groove, and you glue the joist, noggins, wherever it's going to be sitting, you want to get a good bond down there. All right, because the last thing you want to do is walk across your nice new floor, and then you get a you get that creaky bit in the floor. You don't want that. All right. So now no, that's all done, I'm going to get some glue down and start cracking out this floor. You get your perimeters in first with all your, um, on all the joists. And then it's, I think it's 18 screws per board, something like that. But you can just look it all up on the Cable Deck website. And I like to put three going across across the length of the board, across the, the, the depth of the board, so the 600 mil thickness of the board, three across, and then however many joists you've got, and three across each one. And then you're good to go, and just keep going all the way through, and just double check all your grooves before you slide up your new board, because you don't want massive, massive gaps in your board, guys, okay? Because you want the glue to splurge out, and then come up over the top of the over the floor now we got all the floor finished the other day which is absolutely fantastic it's really good to see progress uh, coming along on this build we got some other exciting news we got the windows and the doors uh, well the uh, the front door arriving next week which is absolutely awesome building control are going to be coming out here tomorrow just to basically look at the structure of the build and see if they're happy with it before i finish off all the insulating Today we're fitting the insulation, so that's the PIR board in between all the stud work. You can see I've done a little bit of the wall already, but I just wanted to show you the setup that I got and how I'm cutting all these PIR boards. So I recently said that there was a hat, a saw, a saw out there to cut the PIR board, and I actually went and bought one. So it's the first tool I see, I think it's the ISC 40, 240, something like that. But uh, it's an absolutely brilliant saw. I've been using it to cut all the boards to the heights. So what I did first off, with all my PIL board that I got left, I just cut them all in half using this, just a rough cut, because all my stud work between the noggins, so that's the, <coughs> that's the dividing noggins going all the way through, so that's to pick up my plasterboard edge. What I did <coughs> is just cut them down the middle, and then now what I've got is my table saw all set up just down here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or you can see it. So got this all set up. So it's got a solid fence to go to and I can just push it along through. Everything's got an extraction. So you're not breathing in the, the horrible dust. I do have a face mask as well, just to help with things. Um, and then I'm just coming along and just fitting all the boards. So, and then I'll go to stacking up all my off cuts in the corner. Um, we got the windows fitted as well. Um, and I actually got the front door fitted as well, but my camera actually ran out of um, memory on the, on the SD card. So <laughs> apologies for that, but I'll just show you it working. It closes and, and sh and open absolutely beautifully. All right, and then it's just a thumb turn once you've got it all locked up. Nice simple lock, you don't need anything special. And it's a three point lock, so you've got pins which hook up like that. I can't remember the technical term from it's like beaks, something pelican beaks or something like that. But anyway, it's a three point locking system. So you've got one, two, three points of locking. Um, and I found it was really, really good and so simple to fit, so, so easy. All these have just been absolutely brilliant. So, Clark Windows, if you are watching this video, you're probably not because my following isn't that big at the moment, but if you are watching them, I give them a good thumbs up. And I'd highly recommend for some of you guys to go check them out if you are doing something like this. So, I mean, look how easy they open and close. It's just, they just open and shut, absolutely beautifully then you've got the nice little trickle vents on top there's so many different options that you can choose from if you like i'll put a link in the description down to their website and you can have a little look and see what they can offer you 
but uh, yes, so anyway, cracking on with the insulation board. So we've got everything all set up there, like I said, and then we're just gonna start smashing this out. Then once that's done, we've got aluminium tape, but what I'm also gonna do, if there's any like micro gaps, we'll just go along with a foam fill gun and just fill those little bits in first, cut them off, and then use the aluminium tape afterwards. All right, um, and I can actually show you some of the aluminium tape fitted. It's up in the gable end there. So the point between the rafter comes down the last rafter and the Celotex, you might see some shiny stuff up there. So that's all the aluminium tape. So I just wanted to get that all sealed prior to me putting on that last joist to pick up the ceiling going through there. Okay, and it's in the same on the opposite end down there. And I've done all the noggins and everything to pick up my plasterboard. So that's, the plasterboard is gonna be working from this edge out that way. So it's 1200 millimeters from the head plate, sole plate, uh, head plate or wall plate, all the way back there. And then it goes 1.2, 1.2 and whatever the space is left which is like 1150 or something like that but anyway i'm going to stop gassing and we're going to start cracking on and and fitting these boards i think there's one down here that i can fit yeah i'm literally just cutting them and they just push straight in which is really nice Just like that, simple. So I've got like another 40 odd to go, but in, in this method, you're gonna save a lot, a lot of time because if you imagine you'll be cutting this all with a handsaw. So now everything's done by power tools, you're gonna to save so much more time and energy. And it's most cost effective to do it that way as well. So I'm just getting uh, all my, I know it's waterproof gear in here, but what I don't want is all the insulation all over my clothes because you just get you just get really itchy from it. Well, I, I find I do anyway. And when you got kids and stuff like that, you don't want them to be breathing in this this crap, honestly. So if you can minimise it as much as you can, guys, minimise it. imaginable pieces now. now I'm just going to measure the heights between basically in between the studs so you can see the head plate there and the noggin and then the noggin to the salt plate so I'm just going to go measure that and you've got a base on this it's almost like a giant jigsaw so you can just follow the guide and the base 